Where do salmon go when they go to sea? It is a question that has been asked for hundreds of years, first by indigenous peoples and then by everyone else who calls the North Pacific, and in particular the west coast of North America, home. I like to say that after a hundred years of research all around the Pacific, we know a lot about Pacific salmon, but what we need to know most, we mostly don't know. It is and continues to be the great mystery. Once salmon leave coastal waters, what happens to them? How do they survive? What do they eat? What eats them? What is happening in the Gulf of Alaska that will ensure they return home to spawn? And what can we do to help ensure salmon survive their time at sea? We don't understand the fundamental mechanisms that regulate Pacific salmon. So knowing where are these populations that we're interested, where are they out in the ocean, is a really important first step to understand what factors are affecting them when they're out there. They are questions that scientists from five countries that encircle the North Pacific are seeking to answer. Up until now, they were asking those questions within their respective countries, but not directly with each other. While they knew each other, they were not engaged in shared field expeditions or working closely in a collaborative way. We needed an international year of the salmon. And what that meant was that the fastest way that we were going to understand what regulates salmon abundance was if we worked together as international teams. There are literally uh, hundreds of organizations across the hemisphere dealing with the same big problems around climate change. The goal is to establish a five-year international scientific collaboration by the North Pacific Anadromous Fish Commission member countries who all have an important stake in the health of salmon. Scientists from Canada, the United States, Japan, South Korea, and Russia all participated. And in their coming together, science also took on a diplomatic dimension. Знаете, ну обстановка международная все-таки сложная сейчас. Россия, там Канада, Америка, и поэтому мне кажется, что помимо научных результатов еще важно то, что этот рез сблизит наши народы. Pacific salmon share a common water area in the North Pacific, and Pacific salmon are very important to all the countries that are participating in this expedition. The objectives were to map the epic migrations of salmon out into the ocean, and in doing so, determine the impact of human activity on their lives, and what we can do to ensure these highly resilient beings survive to return to spawn. The expedition began years before the Professor Kaganovsky set sail from Vladivostok on the east coast of Russia with nine scientists on board. Their first destination? Vancouver, British Columbia, where they would welcome aboard their American, Canadian, Japanese, and Korean counterparts. We really have to come to, together as a science team and understand what's regulating salmon so that we can understand what's going to happen as the climate continues to change. That perhaps it's going to get worse, you know, that the, the habitat that's good for salmon is going to decrease, and that's a shared problem. And so we really, I think it's crucial that we work together to try and understand what's going on. Being able to work in real time with other scientists looking at similar questions from around the North Pacific is fabulous. It's very, very exciting. You know, it's very, it's a, like an immersive experience being on a Russian ship for so long. It's been really fun and working with folks from all different countries. And for me, данное исследование является не знаю, отличной площадкой для обмена опытом в данном направлении. Most of the people wake up for every set, even if it's not their shift. Everyone is working, and everyone is really grateful to be here. And, and one of the really cool things, I think, with this is talking to the Russians, because they were in the Western Pacific before they came here, and to just compare what they were seeing there with what we're seeing here, it's really, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's really similar, and there's also some real differences. We work together as a good team, so I'm very excited to have uh, these people and be a part of this team. For the most part, the weather cooperated, allowing the team to collect a wide range of samples that are already providing answers to food supply and organic matter questions. Zooplankton, phytoplankton, and algae were painstakingly examined, labeled, and documented. We will have population-specific DNA, meaning we will estimate the abundance 
of Fraser River sockeye there in the Gulf of Alaska. Knowing where are these populations that we're interested, where are they out in the ocean, is a really important first step to understand what factors are affecting them when they're out there. And now with genetics, I mean, we can tell exactly what river each fish comes from. Right now I am cutting tiny pieces of fin clips of coho salmon and uh, I will add these to this plate and incubate them with a buffer and that will extract the DNA. To know where fish are from is important because in the ocean fish from different origin basically mix and so if you want to do management you got to know where the fish are from to say okay this is an endangered stock we need to preserve this this is an abundant stock we can harvest them. For the salmon that we did catch we wanted to sample muscle liver and gonad tissues, and that's all for, to better understand uh, the energy density, how much energy does the fish have given the resources that are available in the Gulf of Alaska. So we wanted to sample both the fish and the food sources. What we have here is salmon, a Pacific variety. We caught a lot of them today. Our biggest catch yet. Are you happy that we caught so much chump? Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm waiting this big catch. <laughs> there is some food out there. We have to crunch some numbers to figure out whether it's enough. But, uh, you know, we saw fish with full stomachs. We saw some fish with empty stomachs as well, of course. And one of the things that was surprising was just how critical the zooplankton were. It is really the zooplankton that's supporting the, the fish. So what this information gives us for the first time is insights into how the ocean is affecting survival. This has been the most comprehensive survey in the Gulf of Alaska at this time of year in the winter time. So we're setting a baseline. If we're back out there in two years from now, we'll be able to do it for all the fish and we'll get a sense of what are we looking at because where these fish are coming from, Fish don't pay attention to international borders. We have just a little bit of an idea of what's going on. We need to go back, we need to focus on some additional key questions, and we need to know what else is happening. It's a call to action so that we can bring more partners in to work on this. We've set the conditions, we've got people working together in a fashion that will set the conditions for resilience uh, for salmon going forward.